the book kind of like gives you hint like okay when you see something that doesn't look right that doesn't feel right maybe gently offer your help because at the end of the day the victim has to want to be helped otherwise you're just wasting your time welcome to the my future business show where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. My name is Rick, I'm your host. If this is your first time with us on the show, welcome. I know that you're in for a treat, especially today. Now, for those of you who have uh, been with us for any length of time, thank you for all your support. Now, on today's call, I have the pleasure of welcoming Anita Yombo. Welcome to the show, Anita. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely my pleasure. (laughs) Now we're going to be talking about your journey as an author and your book called Between John and a Hard Place. Now I know you have a a very uh, interesting story to tell and before we dig into the core of the core, I'd love to know where you are in the world today. Right um, right now I'm in Los Angeles, California Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where I am but I'm, I'm not originally from here. I've been here for a very long time, but I'm originally from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Fantastic. But yes, yes. So what do you love about Los Angeles? Oh my God, I love everything about Los Angeles. I, I The weather, I think, just agrees with me. I've lived in other places and the weather here seems to, to agree with me. <laughs> like mentally, I just feel like myself when I'm in Los Angeles. I think that would be the one the main thing that I love so much about this place. Now, I I know that, and I'd love to share a bit later on, I know that you come from a place where you were minus 24 on the day that uh, you received a certain book that we're gonna talk about. I can can pretty much tell straight away why you would have wanted to move from a place like that. Now, (laughs) Anita, what do you like doing with yourself when you're not writing or working? Do you have any hobbies? I do, I do. Like, I, I, I love reading. I'll, I'll read anything at any time. I think that's something that just relaxes me. But I also like to go for long nature walks. Mm-hmm. Like I, when I don't feel like myself, a 30 minute walk makes me feel great. Like not too much hiking, but definitely I would say the things that make me happy is reading, walking and watching a really good movie. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> what type of movies do you like? I watch mostly comedy and drama like i really tend to like things that i can relate to in real life um i just recently watched a show on showtime called the undoing i think it came out about a year or two ago but i just finished watching Mm -hmm. it and i like that kind of stuff something that speak to me like psychologically or 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 similar things like things that i can relate to in real life Usually I'm drawn to. Yes. Yeah, fantastic. Now, I have a very special spot on the show for book authors because I know how difficult it can be and challenging to write a book from and actually see it to the end. But um, I wonder, do you read books yourself? I do. I, I do read a lot. Uh, I'm currently reading this book called Violeta. It's from a author named Isabella Linde. She's one of my favorite authors. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm currently reading, I read, I'm a voracious leader, reader. I do read a lot. Yeah, fantastic. Now, I know that some, some people enjoy the book version uh, of, uh, of a story before it goes to cinematics. Do you, right. um, do you follow books in that sort of similar way? What do you prefer, the book versions or the cinematic versions? Always the books. Yeah. Always the books. I've never um, read a book and then watched a movie and preferred the movie to the book. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. the book is always better. As much as visually, also it's good to put like a, to, to see something visually that you read before. But I think it's always good because when you read a book, you really see the extent of the emotion. The the, the situation is fully described to you. And I just like when I'm, I'm, I'm into a book and I can visualize it myself. Yeah. So definitely, definitely, without a doubt, I prefer the book version. So we're All pretty the- much talking about using our imagination. <laughs> How important do you think is to harness our imagination? Imagination is everything. Um, I think your imagination can take you out of a difficult situation. 
imagination can keep you going. Imagination can make your dream, can make you reach your goals. I think imagination is very important. It's just that, that side of you that you have when you're a child that you absolutely need to keep as you get older mm -hmm. until you're mm -hmm. 85, 90. It's, it's very important because for me, imagination, when I'm in a bad situation and I imagine getting out of that situation, my imagination takes me there. You could literally be anywhere. Like when you read a book, like there are parts of the world that I've never been to, but when I read about it, I can imagine what it is like. So imagination can take you yeah. everywhere. Everywhere. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Everywhere. I love it. So imagination now, is important. Yeah. I wonder if we can, if it's okay, go back to childhood, because I often like talking about where we first started out and what life was like when we were a child. Will you be able to share yeah. any of that with us? Yes, absolutely. I was born and raised in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is in Central Africa. Mm -hmm. um, it's a country that used to be a Belgium colony, but we became independent from Belgium in 1960. So I was born in the late 70s. And um, it's a magical place with a lot of political, socioeconomical issues, but it is a beautiful, magical place, mm -hmm. very tropical. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my childhood, basically, I was raised in a very large family. Um, uh, and yeah, so my childhood is from the Congo. Yeah, basically. fantastic. Thank you again for yeah. sharing. Do you, um, no problem. when we when we're growing up, we are often exposed to people that help form us into the people that we are today. And it's something I like right. to explore because it could have um, potentially led to you becoming an author and, and all the other work that you're doing. Who in your life did you look towards as you were growing up? It has to be my mother. Uh, she died when I was 19 years old, so she's been gone for a while, but she kind of, she, she was just an amazing person and she was very influential in my life. She's the person who gave me my first chapter book when I was about six or seven years old. Oh, yeah. And she instilled in me the sense of, you have to always learn, you have to keep learning, you have to educate yourself. You have to learn about every situation in the world so you feel informed wherever you are. So I would say the most influential without a doubt it's my mother she, she's just she left such an impact in my life what's, your, mom, she's been what's yeah. your mom's name monique monique fantastic yeah, yeah i always yes. love this part of the story because we know that you know um whatever we do is always uh, enveloped in relationships that we have in life do you yeah. do you find that that's to be the case absolutely i think the family that we're born into the the environment that we are raised into definitely shape who we become like it's impossible to not examine or analyze who we are today without looking back like yeah. they usually say that you to grow and to know who you are you have to know your roots so i think definitely where you come from whether you like it or not shapes you for the better or the worse um and it's up to you to take the good and leave the bad but definitely your childhood makes you who you are today absolutely that's fantastic feedback thank yeah. you so much for sharing yeah. I, I i'd love to ask you uh, as yeah. an author um sometimes i used to struggle um mm -hmm. trying to put pen to paper and i just couldn't get into the groove so i wonder right. from the moment that you get up one are you an early riser and what does a day look like for you to get into the mood to write See, the thing, some people write early in the morning, mm -hmm. and I think for me it's the opposite. I write very late at night, like it's the last thing that I do after I've gone through my day, I've taken a bath, I'm in my pajamas, and it's the end of the day. For some reason, that quiet moment right before I go to bed, mm -hmm. I use that two hours to just write. And, and, and I think I don't force myself, like I don't have, some people are like, okay, I need to write 50 pages, 100 pages a day for me. I don't force it because the moment I force it, I will stop enjoying it. So I tell myself, okay, I will write for two hours every day or I will try and I sit in front of my laptop and I start writing. If it ends up being only two pages, I'm satisfied. If it ends up being a thousand pages, I'm happy. I think you should not force it. You sit in front of a computer. If you feel inspired, you put it down on paper. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not good quality, just mm -hmm. write. Don't force it because the moment you start forcing yourself, it's not enjoyable anymore. Just let it flow. Fantastic. Let it come naturally. Yes. I love this conversation because it really does give those who are on the call with us today and need to some idea of what they're going to be facing and some of the techniques, I guess you'd say, um, is it really just like, um, a really rough, 
uh, diamond in the rough type draft when you write? You don't think about structure, you just get it out? Yes, I my first draft is just just my thought. I just put it on paper and mm. I don't care about grammar. I don't care about structure. As long as I know who my characters are mm. and where they're mm. going, or I have an idea where they're going and what they're going through, I don't care about structure, grammar. I don't care about anything. I just write. My first draft is very raw. And to me, it works better. Just yeah. keep going. Don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about editing. Don't worry about it. Just keep going. And then when you get to the end, you can go back and, and, and restructure and, and edit. Did yeah. you get any um, help externally to help you finalize this wonderful book? Yes, yes, yes. When I finished my first draft, I went back and I did the first run of editing myself. And then I hired this editor. She's from England. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she, I sent her the, the, the book and she was like, okay, I think you can work together. And she had me, we were going back and forth. She had me kind of like see things I wasn't seeing. She had with some structure work. So she was great. It took us about four months going back and forth to finish oh, wow. the editing process. Yes, yes, yes. And that's the thing a lot of people don't really appreciate is that there is a lot of work that goes into a book. Everything from oh, yes. writing it is one thing, getting your idea on the page, all the way through to ISBNs, which I'd love to talk about later on. But uh, yeah. do, you, do you think that uh, you have another book inside of you? I do. I definitely do. I think the moment I, re I release or publish this book, which is about a month and a half ago, I already started thinking about the second book. I think I, I already started writing it. So I do have a second book in me. I don't, how long is it going to take me to write it? I'm not sure, but I definitely I already started. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. I love it. <laughs> you know, you have to leave your wisdom on the page, don't you? All right. Yeah. How did you feel? the moment that you had finished it or at least um let me talk about that thing that i touched on earlier it was a very cold day 24 minus uh in your location at the time i'm not sure sure where you were but you received a package from amazon tell us about that the, i'm sorry I, did, I didn't understand that question with the when you received a package in the mail from amazon it was 24 yeah. minus and it happened to be your book tell us about the moment that you got your the physical copy in your hands Oh, it was, it was so amazing. Um, I, 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 it's just kind of like giving birth basically like an intellectual baby. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it was such, um, enjoyable labor for me to just write this book and, and I wasn't sure when I was going to finish it. And the fact that I finished it, it's edited and it's, I could see a copy and I could see my name on it. And it's something that I've dreamt of since I was a little girl that one day I will write a whole novel. The joy is, I can't describe the joy that I felt. I was just very proud of myself. And I realized the hard work that has paid off <laughs> at the end. So to me, like in, anything that came after the publishing doesn't even matter. Just the fact that I was able to finish the book and publish it, it meant. Yeah, a that's a real me. achievement. Congratulations. I know you've got a, oh, a, hand, you. you've got a handful of uh, positive reviews that I've checked out and they're, they're wonderful feedback from really nice people I've, I've noticed. You obviously attract that type of audience, don't you? Yes, 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 definitely. Because I, I, I realize also that like when you write a book, it can be for everyone. So whenever someone reads a book and they actually enjoy it, um, because the style is very different. I'm, I'm writing from a first person and most people don't like that style. So I was very nervous. I was like, okay, some people like the narrator to, to narrate everybody's point of view. But when you write from the first person, it's only one person's point of view. Mm -hmm. So my fear was that I was gonna get very negative feedback when it came to, to that style of writing. But to my surprise so far, I've gotten extremely great feedback and I, I'm, I'm, it just makes me so happy. So do you, <laughs> when you write, do you actually prefer typing or actually picking up the pen? And is there power in the pen? No, I, I type. Mm. Uh, I have a, a terrible handwriting. So <laughs> you if, too. If I, I, I wouldn't work <laughs> you too. <laughs> you have terrible yeah, handwriting. Yes, horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> so no, I, I prefer typing. Absolutely. I stray away from my handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> now you've obviously um had an intention for this book i'm wondering what was the intention of of writing this book could you share that with us yes absolutely um the book is it talks about um, sex trafficking sexual abuse verbal abuse and i felt like it's 
it's a big problem, but at the same time, it's an invisible problem. Like it's really a difficult to identify when someone is going through abuse or sexual abuse or is being trafficked. So I felt like, let me tell the story of someone who's going through that. And maybe it will help people be able to see, okay, I'm looking at someone and the situation doesn't look normal. How do I help this person? Or someone who's going through an abusive situation, maybe we'll see that. So when I wrote the book, I just wanted to send a message that there's a big problem out there that's hiding in plain sight, mm -hmm. that's stopping attention. So, so I think sexual abuse and, and sex trafficking is one of those, those things. So I, I wanted to put the message out that there are a lot of victims out there mm -hmm. and we could help them, yes. So what have you learned about intuition? You've learned as you've matured and been exposed to these um, events, what's your intuition? Has it, has it like changed? Have you become finely tuned to those around you? You know, I am, but it's, it's like you say, like you, you, the way you grow up shapes who you are. And I think when you, 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 your parents raise you, they raise you to also not always express everything you feel and everything you think you the teacher. Okay. You have to learn how to, to filter yourself, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think as an adult, when I see something and my, my, my intuition is telling me something, sometimes I, sometimes I have self doubt. I'm like, am I just being paranoid or this situation is not a good situation? So I'm learning because you could be wrong. Like yep. you, you could read a situation wrong. So it's always kind of like, I think I'm learning to really listen that this is really your intuition. You're not being, being paranoid or you're not reading the room wrong. So it's, it's a learning process. I don't think I've learned, I'm, I'm there when I fully trust my intuition. It's there, I think it speaks to me, but sometimes I can identify, is it my intuition or just my thinking? So no, I, I can't say that I'm, I'm fully there, but I'm mm. definitely learning to tune into myself and, and, and try to kind of like identify when I see a situation, whether it's concerning me or someone that I, around me mm -hmm. to be able to not misread it. Yeah. And, it's definitely not easy. Not easy, it's, absolutely not, because there'd be a lot no. of, um, I guess, would there be a lot of uh, like stigmas and shame about sharing this? And with through your book, are you finding that people are reaching out to you for that conversation to crack the ice, as it were? Yes, absolutely. I, I actually had a lady who reached me on Instagram and say, yes, actually, I had, I, one of the person in my neighborhood was go, was a sex traffic girl and mm. and I keep I kept seeing her and something was odd about her until one day I forced myself to speak to her and I learned that she was in someone's house out of her will like it wasn't her will to be there and mm. and she was forced mm. to be there and she said it's so good that you're writing about this because this is happening everywhere all the time but it's very difficult for people to just speak about it because it's so shameful. And it's also scary because when you see someone and, and the situation doesn't look right, I think it's difficult because it's like, what if I'm just misreading it? What if she's not being sexually abused or she's mm. not <laughs> a victim of sex trafficking? So I think it's, it's the book kind of like gives you a hint, like, okay, when you see something that doesn't look right, that doesn't feel right, maybe gently offer your help. Because yep. at the end of the day, the victim has to want to be helped. Yep. Otherwise, you're just yep. wasting your time. Yeah. So do you think that a problem shared is a problem halved? Yes. So that conversation is just the first point, a port of call, yeah. isn't it? So yes, absolutely. Now, when somebody reads this wonderful book between John and a hard place, let's yep. break it down a little bit. What's inside? So basically the, the, the book is, is completely fictional, but it's something that I based out of a real situation. Mm. Uh, even though I'm, I, I, I've been here for 20 years, in 2015, I went back to the Congo and I was staying at my father's house. And it's very customary for people in the Congo to have a guardian uh, at the gate. So my father's guardian was talking to other guardian in the neighborhood and he was talking about how his brother's daughter had just vanished. They didn't know what happened to her. And his brother was really in a bad situation. They didn't know who, who to turn to. And she was only 15 or 16 year old at the time. And all the other guardian around him started to chime into the conversation, telling him, listen, it happened to me also. My, my niece disappeared, my nephew disappeared, my, my friend's son disappeared. So one of them said, you know, a lot of this happens all the time when you, young girls and boys disappear because they get abducted 
and they get taken into other countries to become sex slaves. So I was listening into the conversation, even though I wasn't part of the conversation, and the conversation kind of like really stayed with me. I remember coming back and, and just wondering, okay, these things are happening around the world, and it's happening in the Congo where mm. people, kids are disappearing, they are sex trafficked, and, and, and it just made me want to start writing the book. So the book basically talks about a girl born and raised in the Congo when she was 16, she was abducted and taken into America. And so she went through two years of this ordeal when she was living at this man's house as a sex slave. So the book basically takes you into the journey. It's mm -hmm. very intense. Um, and it has very some, some difficult parts to read, but it basically just takes you into the journey of this young woman who was abducted and taken into um, the United States and became a sex slave. So it's yeah. very intense. When you, you open the book, that's what basically you have to, to go through. Yeah, yeah. And you have to be ready mentally to read such a dark, intense story. Thank you for sharing that. I wonder, uh, you, you mentioned earlier about the editorial process taking some four months. Um, yes. Overall, how long did it take to complete the book from start to finish? It took me about six months to write the book. To finish the book, the first draft, it took me about six months um, and, and the editing took about four months. So overall, the book from writing the first draft to finishing editing, it took about 12 months. It must yeah. be very powerful, um, you know, conjure up very powerful, positive feelings, knowing that the work that you're doing, the book that you're writing is actually going to help people around the world. Um, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel great. I think just writing the story because like sexual abuse victims usually don't speak up for themselves. Mm. Um, so take putting myself into the role of a sexually abused person and writing a book because the book is, is the person who was abused telling her story. Mm. So it mm. makes me feel, I wouldn't say good, but it makes me feel like I'm, I'm contributing. I'm contributing. doing something if that I'm giving a voice to those who have gone through this. I'm giving them a voice and say, this is my very, very small contribution mm. to, to tell your story. I haven't gone through that, but I definitely try to understand and try to tell the story the best way I can. Definitely. So, so personally, Anita, do you find the writing process itself therapeutic? Absolutely. It's therapeutic because I think whether the story relates to you or not, there are definitely parts that you have to tap into your personal journey. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think in every car in every book, I think if you're a writer in every book you write, there's going to be a character or two that you take from you, from your personal experience and you put into a book, whether even if it's just a very small part. So yes, when I was writing the book, I found myself some of the thoughts that are very personal or very unique to me. I found them putting them into paper mm -hmm. so it's very therapeutic mm -hmm. to kind of like be faced with that faced with those whether it's a very dark uh, thought or just something that you, you kind of like never thought of that way i think writing it on paper definitely has so it's it is therapeutic yeah it could take you yeah. to a dark place or it can make you feel good it depends mm -hmm. on how you take mm -hmm. it absolutely it certainly <laughs> yeah. um, gets you to yeah. look at the truth doesn't it um absolutely if nothing else now yeah. i know that uh, you obviously have uh, print on demand uh, we've talked about that earlier what other formats uh, is your book in do you intend to do audio book or do you have an audio book no, a writer is only ebook and, and, and hardcover, but I haven't done an audiobook. It's definitely something that I'm working on right now. It's another thing that takes time. So it's definitely the step that I'm taking right now because the book has been out for almost two months, a month and a half. And so now I'm going because I saw the response. I wasn't sure I was going to do an audiobook. I was like, okay, I'm a first time author. Mm. I don't know how the book people respond to the book. I didn't think that it was going to be to receive such great response for me to go and do an audiobook. Mm -hmm. But now that I've seen the response, I'm like, okay, I definitely have to do more format. To and, that, like, and that yeah. taps into a market that may struggle to read, possibly. I'm not sure. Exactly, exactly. A lot of people, whether they struggle to read or some people just want to listen to a book while they're driving, long distance driving, or while they're traveling and they just want to listen, 
without having to, to look at a book and pay attention and reading. So it taps into a brand new market. Um, a lot of people, so it's definitely something that I, I, I started working on because I think it's worth it. It's, it's becoming a huge market. Mm. So I'm mm. definitely, I started the process of doing an audio book. Excellent. Absolutely. Now, do you yeah. think, Anita, that everybody's got a book inside of them? And given the fact that you've written your own book, do you think you'd be uh, somebody that uh, could help others write their book? Yes, absolutely. I think, like, even though I, I write, and I've been writing for a very long time, this is my first book, I still don't consider myself a full-on writer. Mm. I think you become a writer at your second book, because I think anyone, whether you're a writer or not, you could write a book. Mm. If you've gone through life, you, 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 you had a family, you, your environment, society, where you live, I think we all have the ability to write at least one book in our life. Um, it's the second book that makes you a bona fide writer. Fantastic. So we all do. And I could definitely have people write, kind of like to take them through the process that I've gone through and to give them advice on how to not only write the book, how to market the book mm -hmm. and how to put it on Amazon and how to, to reach a wide variety of audience. So I think definitely I could help people at this point. Yeah. See, there's a lot of mechanical stuff that happens after the writing is done. And, you know, when I first saw the reference to ISBN, I'm thinking, what is this all about? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's one thing to write a book, but then this ISBN thing comes up before you can be recognized. Tell us a little bit about that process and what it was like for you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you could use different, definitely different services, but I use a service called Barker. Barker, Barker it's B-O-W-K-E-R, mm -hmm. where you have to purchase the ISBN whenever you write a book. The ISBN is basically in individual identification for your book right. so no matter where you sell the book by the isbn even without looking at the title your book has an id and the id is the isbn so when you publish your book via amazon for instance you could either choose to get an isbn that amazon can assign to your book right or you could buy a, a, an isbn through other services uh, that's going to make you more like an international identification. Ah. So mm -hmm. it's it, it's not, it's costly. Like if you, you get it on Amazon, it's it's free if you publish through Amazon. But if you want to publish it worldwide, you need to buy uh, the ISBN. So it's like an ident identification number that is specific to your to book. Your book. So do you think it was worthwhile grabbing that? Because I know they're about three, four hundred dollars or something. Yes, it depends. Uh, through the service that I told you, B-O-W-K-E-R, you can yeah. yeah. buy one ISBN for $120. So it's not as pricey. Mm. If you, wanna, you want to release more books, then you buy like a package, which yeah. can cost up to $1,000. But you could buy a single ISBN for your book. If you don't think you're going to plan on publishing more books, you can buy just one ISBN and that that's for a life, lifetime as like it's an intellectual property. So yep. that identification stays with your book for a lifetime. You know what, so you just, buy just, individual just that information alone would change uh, new authors lives. I can tell you, I wish I'd knew that when, when I was first starting out. <laughs> now, yes, yes. When you distribute your book, is it important to be seen on multiple platforms? Do you think? Yes, it is. Um, I mean, the beauty of it that we have multiple i mean you have a, a plethora of of platforms right now you can do it through apple you can do it through amazon you can do i mean we have so many platforms that you can release your book but for me i think i chose the first 90 days you have this program called kdp select on amazon mm -hmm. when the book mm -hmm. is only exclusive to amazon um and prime subscribers so when you have the 90 days you sign up for amazon you cannot release the book anywhere else so the good thing about it is that amazon has this program they call it amazon unlimited where people pay ten dollars a month to to read an unlimited amount of books so the good thing about signing up for that that kdp select you have 90 days where amazon just sends your book to these people that are subscribed for amazon unlimited mm -hmm. so you get a lot of exposure yeah you could choose to renew the 90 days after the 90 days expire or you could choose to put it out in this case once you're done with the 90 days you could release it everywhere else like on itunes you could put it on 
every other platform like Barnes and Noble, you can put it everywhere else. Yeah. But I think it's definitely if you want to reach a wider audience, I think it's worth definitely p- putting it on as many platforms as, as possible. You can. Well, that's yeah. wonderful. I know that you are on Amazon now. When people want to obviously buy the book, um, yeah. tell us where they can find you and maybe connect with you. Yes, right now I'm on every platform, um, social media platform. I'm on Twitter as Anita Yombo. I'm on Instagram as Anita Yombo, and I'm on Facebook as Anita Yombo. However, if you want to purchase the book, you can go on Amazon.com and just type my name, and I have an author's page, and you'll be able to see the book right there. Or you could just tap on Amazon between John and a Hard Place, and the book will pop out. I'm also available at Barnes and Noble. And I can tell uh, everybody who was on the call today, if you want to uh, get your hands on this book, most certainly go and check out Amazon and type in Between John and a Hard Place. That'll be the one of the first places to start. But also, I know that uh, you are on goodreads.com as a uh, an author, which is fantastic. So yes. uh, what's that about? Tell people about why it would be important for them to read your book, then go to Goodreads. So Goodreads, it's this amazing, amazing platform for author and reader. Uh, it basically, like as an author, you can create a page and you reach, I mean, Goodreads has a lot of subscribers. I mean, millions and millions of subscribers around the world. So as an author, if you put your book on Goodreads, you reach out a lot of people uh-huh. and uh-huh. you can show them how to reach you, how to contact you. and as a reader, also, when you go on Goodreads and you want to see the review of a book, Goodreads really gives you all the people's pre- people gives you previews, they keep, give you their reviews, they give you how to rate the book. Mm-hmm. So if you're trying to find the book like in a specific category, you go on Goodreads and you can find what other people think of it. Mm-hmm. Because what I noticed is that reviews mean a great deal for people when they want to purchase something unfortunately i mean back in the days we didn't do that like when we just went to a bookstore see a book and you like it you purchase it but nowadays because we're online people only purchase a book if it has good reviews yeah so goodread and amazon definitely happen goodread is a huge platform with a lot of people so as an author or reader i think it's good to open an account with goodreads Fantastic. Well, if you're on the call today, you've obviously uh, heard just a bit of the story behind uh, the book uh, and writing the book. And there will be links below this post. No matter where you listen to it, you'll be able to track back to this wonderful book between John and a hard place. And with that all being said, Anita, what a wonderful call. Thank you very much for joining me on the show today. Thank you so much. Have a good one. (laughs) Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.